ready to go inside the rock and roll world of Machine Gun Kelly? The all-new Hulu documentary Machine Gun Kelly's Life in Pink gives you intimate and unfiltered access to Machine Gun Kelly's meteoric rise to stardom as he overcomes self-doubt and haters to bring his authentic vision of music to his fans. The Hulu documentary Machine Gun Kelly's Life in Pink is now streaming only on Hulu. At Progressive, we know there's nothing like the feeling of riding a motorcycle with your crew on the open road. It's a primal, wild freedom. A feeling that would be impossible to recreate on the radio. Until now. Hit it, sound effects guy. <laughs> hmm, no. You know, we really lost our stride at the end there. Get 24-7 roadside assistance with Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Roadside assistance subject to policy terms and limits and may require comprehensive coverage. Welcome to the Next Age of Podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each and every day of the work week. And it has begun again. Here we go. Little nipply. Little nipply. It was... uh. Uh, it's like 58 degrees cold front blew through. That's, that's intensely awesome. Save a little money on freaking energy costs. And, uh, you know, just not so GD hot, not bad, not bad at all. High pressure system moving in here. Uh, all right. Welcome in. I am so glad you are here. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I know I did. I know I did. Um, Real uh, high ratio of uh, high amount of Pooh Bear points earned, which then kind of went out the window yesterday as I uh, had kind of a smart mouth attack. And that kind of messed things up for your old pal Eric Zane. I actually lost some of the Pooh Bear points. I don't remember exactly the scenarios. Uh, I, she, one of the things she does is she has a tendency when she's ready to start speaking, the queen of the forest, if she's having, if there's like a, if she's having like a, a snack just before she's getting ready to speak, she'll, uh, um, take the food and put it into her mouth, start chewing it and then start speaking. And so I'm constantly going, yeah, put more food in your mouth. And man, she got so pissed off. She actually told me to fuck off and gave me the finger. That actually happened. She was livid over that. Bring her in here. Hello. Yeah, I uh, I hear Daisy snoring. Oh yeah. Melissa uh, is referring to me as a cockhead Uh over when I uh, made fun of you for stuffing eight pounds of pretzel chips into your mouth and then talking. Yeah, that was cockheadish. That, that, that's the one where you said, yeah, you know what, Eric, fuck off. And you gave me the finger. You actually said, you know what, Eric, fuck off. (laughs) I don't like being knocked and you were knocking me. That's what happens. Now, prior to that, I had done something else. I don't recall what, but I had lost. I had uh, the, more than once yesterday. I lost Pooh Bear points. You did. Do you remember the specifics you were of on my rule? Yeah. Well, that was one of them. I don't recall what else. Do you? Do you recall what uh, else? I think you were being cockadish on the way home from church. Uh, I don't know. I, you know what? I don't, I don't recall. I don't recall. And by the way, how about you making up your own rules for communion for, uh, 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 you basically going against Vatican II? Okay. Thank you. Can we, can we discuss that? No. Why not? I'm going to talk about that. What? What? It's, 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 uh, it's. Listen. I'm going to talk about it as soon as I hang up on you. Well, I just did what I did because I was I, just what I just wanted to do. So uh, there. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're, if you have the, um, <laughs> I don't know if, if you have the authority to make the rules. I do. 
Well, you're going to have to take that up with Father Colin. Okay, I, I'll go talk to him. I'm pretty. How about that guy, though? Is he not the best? I know. He's very, very <laughs> bright, by the way. And I think that's why he's going to um, Boston. To, is it Boston? No, it's Washington. Washington to, um, uh, well, uh, I guess, learn, study canon law. Yeah. Like for three years, I think. That sounds incredibly boring to me. Yeah, I don't know how that. Maybe, uh, maybe he's being groomed. Well, that's probably not a good word to use concerning the Catholic Church. The word "groomed" is probably not a great word. Maybe they're uh, they are eyeing him to one day be like a bishop or something like that. Yeah, or a cardinal or something. Well, it's bishop then cardinal. You know. Yeah. Can you imagine let's if follow, he? Let's follow, huh? let's, follow, let's follow a bishop then. I'm, uh, Archbishop. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. What was uh, what was that you said? Is there a bishop and then an archbishop? Is there two, is that two different things? No idea. No clue. Okay. Oh. All I know is that on a fundamental level, you broke every rule in the book yesterday, and you did it well, here's the actually thing. Here's during my, here's the mass, here's actually here's in thing. math. Mass. So here's my thought. This, yesterday or Saturday, I couldn't make it to confession because I was throwing a, a graduation party. And the Saturday before that, I couldn't uh, make it to confession because we didn't get done doing yard work until after confession was over and we barely made it to church. So there was two weeks I couldn't go to confession. And because they don't have confession any other time and because I was doing good deed, I did a good deed yesterday by throwing a gra uh, graduation party for someone. I thought that that was... Um, no. No. A good enough reason to be able to do with that. No, no, no. That's that still does not. Uh, you haven't yet gone through. Well, they need to have confession more often than Saturday at three o'clock. Like you what, just listen. A terrible time. All it's a terrible time for confession. All you had to do was just not go up for communion. Uh, I know that, but well, I didn't want to miss out on communion anymore. I've well, missed out on communion for the last three weeks. That's that's another sin. That's a sin on top of a sin. You can't okay. you can't just say ah oh, screw it and then just say yeah I just decided that uh that I'm I'm good. You can't that's not okay. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, All right. Yeah, that's that's got to come out in the wash. Okay. I'm just hey, I didn't make the rules. I'm just right. I'm just I'm the messenger here. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being a messenger. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure that you know, uh, you know what uh, what what the playing field has on it. Okay. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay. All right. All right, I love you. Okay, I love you too. I'll talk to you. Talk to you. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Yeah. Um. So. Again. Every single week. Every member of the church community should be in the confessional because we're all massive sinners. That's the, that's the trick here. You go to confession often. It's a very important sacrament. If you, if you skip it, you know, kind of not being honest with yourself. So we as Catholics, that's what we do. Uh, Queen of the Forest, like she indicated the, for a couple of weeks, she just didn't go up for communion, which is perfectly acceptable. You go to the Mass, you take part in the Mass, uh, you sing, you pray, you shake hands, you love each other. But when it comes to communion, if you are in a state of sin, you can't take it. Okay. That's the rules. I don't know. The, the, call your local priest and ask them why the rules are. I don't know. I, everybody knows that I'm the best rule follower. If it comes down to rules, I follow. Isn't that a song by you two? I will follow. I will follow. So, uh, a couple weeks ago, she kind of just sits there through it. 
does her thing, no big deal. Communion comes and goes. She sits there. Actually, she went up with her hands across her chest, and uh, Father Father blesses her and sits back down. Last week, she just sits in the pew. I go up. Uh, this week, um, I'm getting ready to go up and get communion. And she goes, I'm just going to go. I, I, I just can't stand it. I'm just going to go. And um, she's looking at me for some type of, like, reaction. Okay? And I was like, look, hey, I am low man on the totem pole. I, uh, she goes, well, your brother, and she actually, this is actually during the mass. Your brother Jim does it all the time. And I'm like, wait, yeah, and you know what? I should probably, I forgot to bring that up. Your brother Jim does it all the time. Yes. What did you mean by your brother Jim does it all the time? Since when do we look to my brother Jim <laughs> as some type of church leadership? Uh, I mean, uh, if I'm turning towards my brother Jim for uh, input on, you know, things like this, that's that's kind of screwed up. Did you really yeah. did you really uh, go to that card? Well, Your well, brother well, Jim heard, does it. I, this is the thing. I heard that that is an old um, practice that they don't do anymore. That's a lie. You've been to you've been to confession and 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 uh, and and discuss these exact things. Since when did you hear a big announcement <laughs> that this? Wait, did you not hear about it? I did not hear about it. I I, I will send you the article. I think uh, thou art full of shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll look up the article and send it to you. Behold, I hey. thou art say thy lady. Beeth fulleth of shitteth. <laughs> Truth be told, I probably shouldn't have uh, gone up there too. I probably should have had a confession anyway. But I'm still, I'm still better than you. Uh, moments before uh, confession or uh, uh, communion starts, you're like, I'm just gonna do it because your brother Jim said it's okay. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go look for the article right now. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. I mean, there... I'll, I'll go call. I'll go call. Uh, I'll walk Kobiak right now. The bishop. And so I guess we have a new priest coming. His name is. Uh, he's from Vietnam. Fang he's... Fong. Fang Fong. Fong Fang or something. <laughs> Fong. Wait. I think it's Father Fong Fan. Fong Fan. Yeah, I'm not sure, and I don't know if it's, it's F or PH or or what. I think, it, I think it's PH. Okay. Oh, uh, I think the first name is PH, and then the last one is I don't know. Now, all we're shooting for when we get a new priest is that we can understand the the English, and this is right. Uh, he, he, he's he's a you know immigrant. He came to the U.S. He speaks English as a second language, probably. Yeah, but I, you know, he's been here for 30 years, he said, so I'm, I'm Well, that doesn't mean that. anything. Yeah, that doesn't, you know, right. we had a, a Pakistani priest, if you recall, named Father Ayub. Uh -huh. And uh, instead of the name Ayub, uh, he earned the nickname, Father, I can't understand you. Yeah. The Pakistani was so thick on his English. That it, yeah, was, it was. It was very difficult to understand, but we did grow to understand him. We were able to. Oh, I loved him. By the he time was great. he left, he was he was awesome. I loved him. By the time he left, we were we. Uh, yeah, I tell you what. Out of all the priests, sorry, out of all the priests we've had there, I've I've liked them all. They've yeah. all been great. You know. All right. Exactly. All right. Okay. I'll go look for that article now. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay. I love you. Bye. Queen of the Forest, legendary. Uh, welcome into the Eric Zane Show podcast. I am so glad that you are here. Okay. Now, the show happens in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio each and every day of the work week. I am only doing the show Monday through Thursday of this week. Friday is my colonoscopy. And then I am going to be... Uh, taking the following week 
off. I will post material. Uh, those garbage best of shows, but it's something, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I got to take some time off. It's very, very important that I do that. So uh, the following week, that means I will be back on July 11. 11. All right. Uh, so, yes. Thank you if you are checking out the show on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, as well as Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. For those folks on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, I'm about to uh, shuffle you off for the rest of your day unless you go to my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. That's the only way you can get the rest of this live show. Okay? Goodbye. Thank you. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. They are awesome. Uh, let's see. Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost. E- um, I'm sorry, Blue Frost IT. And YouTube brought to you by Frank Fuss, my policy shop insurance. Let us unpack this. Dare he unpack? The elephant in the room? Of course I will. That's why you're here. My willingness to talk about the thing that the whole, well, country is talking about. Abortion. Friday, just as the weekend was getting started, Roe versus uh, Wade, right, was overturned. And uh, that put into motion a series of uh, pissed off comments from pissed off people and uh, happy comments from happy people. The majority of the country, about 56% of the country, thinks that it should not be the way it is in this country right now with abortion being illegal um advocates for rights are saying leave my body alone this is mine and if i want to kill a baby uh i can kill a baby now i know you're like oh okay well clearly we know where eric zane is on this and it's like no i don't think you do so relax i had a discussion about this with my daughter and um Jackie and she goes and uh I, I said uh I said frankly I find the practice to be horrible and um you know one of the worst things that could possibly happen in my opinion. However, and then I termed it as killing a baby. And she goes, Well it's not killing a baby. I go, What what do you mean? What do you mean it's not killing a baby? Well, what is it then? Saving a baby? Is a baby alive? No, well, it's not a baby. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, when does life start? I go, well, it starts at conception, in my opinion. I go, you can, you can put any bow you want on it, but you are still uh, ending a life that where there once was. I firmly believe that. And she goes, well, I can tell this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, this is how this guy go. Well, look. I actually, surprise, I support you. I want this to be legal. Your right to go kill that baby is now gone. And I don't think it should be. What do you think about that? So she's confused. She goes, well, you're calling it killing a baby, but you support my right? I go, well, yeah, I find it heinous and despicable, but it's still your body. And a woman's body needs to be left alone. Get your fucking hands off her body. If she wants to have an abortion, that's her fucking right to do that. And now we've gone backwards in time. So women no longer have the right to choose that. And this also opens up a horrible, 
horrible Pandora's box for the uh, further dissolving of rights, potentially, for a person to utilize contraception. And that, by the way, is virtually all women. Uh, IUD devices, any type of birth control pills. Uh, This is all potentially on the table for the future for women in this country. They would not be allowed to, if Clarence Thomas sees it his way, be able to do that sort of thing. That seems remarkable. Think about all the women in your life who uh, take any type of like birth control medication, the pill. Out! That would be out. I hate to slippery slope on you, but that's on the table as of right now. Uh, In addition... Gay rights. What was that uh, landmark case? Uh, was it uh, Oberg v- Obergfell v. Hodges? That was the one. Obergfell v. Hodges was the landmark civil rights case in which the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the fundamental right to marry is guaranteed to same-sex couples by both the due process clause and the equal protection clause of the 14th amendment of the United States constitution. Well, with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, this type of decision could apply to cases like Obergfell versus Hodges, which if the conservative um, majority of the court sees it the way conservatives would want it to go with one ruling that could be the end of gay marriage in the United States on a federal level, which would mean that any of you who are married to a person who is the same sex or whatever, this is a horrible thing for gay and transgendered people all across the United States if it does go this way. Uh, right away, there are a number of states that um, it's now illegal to get an abortion. They're called trigger laws. Like Texas had a law on the books so that it quite literally, I was reading an article where there were women in the waiting room of abortions are us and Uh, in the waiting room and actually in exam rooms, wearing like the gown, uh, getting ready to either get a consultation or actually to get an abortion. And then some guy, yes, Uh, abortion's off. Uh, Supreme Court, I mean, it was that stark of a moment. So we have a lot of pissed off people in this country. I know... Uh, I'm looking at the comments of uh, Zaniacs. Stevie is extremely vocal. Um, Megan, extremely vocal. And they're like saying uh, that they're going through friends list on Facebook to see if anyone supports the overturning of Roe v. Wade and like um, unfriending them. That's some serious shit. This is a uh, a huge deal. In fact, so just so you know, I think abortion's terrible, and I'd be disgusted if I if my daughter ha- ever had an abortion. Good morning. Hey, wow, abortion gone, just like that. You you must be furious. I am. How are you coping? It's been a couple of days now. Um, trying to stay away from watching the news and um, looking too much at social media. We also discussed the possibility of um, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution being challenged in other things like contraception and gay marriage. Is, mm-hmm. uh, do you, are you, I mean, is that, is that what, what you're kind of, uh, looking towards now well yeah i mean i have a lot of friends that this is gonna affect right right very negative way me too me too yeah um okay so when i talk on this show 
Um, I, I hate abortion. I hate it with every bit of my soul. And I support you. Does that, have you ever met anybody that does that? I mean, I, I, I think it's disgusting and terrible, but it should be, uh, we, this should not be screwed with in my opinion. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, look, it's nobody's, well, okay. I can't speak for everybody. It's not my favorite thing in the world, obviously, but it's required in certain cases. We know that, you know, if a woman has a miscarriage, she shouldn't be forced to carry around a dead fetus in her body. Come on. It's ridiculous. Um, and that's what they're talking about. Now they can't remove this dead fetus from her body if she miscarries. Come on. So, you know, it seems like more and more people are taking to the streets as protests. They've, you've got joy mm-hmm. in the streets, too. People that are, are pro-life saying, oh, my God, this is so great. We've been waiting for this. And, uh, you know, um, you know, I guess I, I, I think this is it. It would take years for this to be turned around any other way. It's going to be this is going to take some time, if at all. Um, but, uh, I saw that some posts, including you and Megan were indicating that, uh, Hey, we don't want to go back to the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Wait. So that seems to be the, um, consensus from a lot of people that I see. People are very upset about this. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, um, I appreciate you. I hope you have a good day. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. Talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, no judgment from me. I'm not going to sit there and uh, and point fingers at people that are pro-life. I'm not going to point fingers at people that are uh, uh, pro-choice. It is what it is. There's nothing more that can be said or done about it. Clarence Thomas is the one that's kind of in the crosshairs. By the way... Um, Black guy marrying white guy is also um, part of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. I'm sorry. Black guy marrying a white woman or or opposite. Mixed marriage. There was a time when that wasn't allowed. But because of uh, landmark cases, uh, that, of course, is the thing, as it should be. He's married to a white woman. If that you could using the same standards as Obergfell versus Hodges and any type of landmark case regarding contraception, you could, in theory, uh, the, the court could challenge previous rulings on black people marrying white people. But I doubt he would do that. This guy seems like he is public enemy number one. Uh, towards people who are uh, pro cho- uh, pro choice and obviously pro gay marriage and pro contraception, he actually on Friday called for overturning the constitutional rights that the court had affirmed for access to contraceptives and LGBTQ rights in an opinion occurring concurring with the majority to decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. In his separate opinion, Thomas acknowledged at Friday's decision. In Dobbs v. Jackson, Women's Health Organization does not directly affect any rights besides abortion, but he argued that the Constitution's due process clause does not secure a right to an abortion or any other substantive right, and he urged the court to apply that reasoning to other landmark cases. So, okay, yeah, that's the point. That's where it stands, and what could eventually be a real mess for people who are gay and married or people who are utilizing, uh, taking advantage of contraceptives. And that just seems fucking crazy bonkers. If it wasn't crazy enough already as it is, um, with this ban on abortion, um, that would make it even more off the rails. Unbelievable. So yes, There are people all over the place who want to be able to kill a baby. They say, look, we, I, uh, I want, I want the choice. I want to be able to kill a baby. 
let's let let's not mince words here. You are doing that, and that is hideous and despicable and awful. And you absolutely should be allowed to do the same thing. Corey says, Eric, a baby and a fetus are not the same thing. Uh, you can split hairs all you want. Uh, remember, I'm on your side. Okay? I am on your side. All of you pro-choice motherfuckers, as hideous as that is, I am on your side. So if you want to go ahead and be be a baby killer, I am team baby killer. Yes, I am team baby killer. I don't care what size it is. I vote yes for dead babies. That is where I stand on this hideous, ridiculous discussion. You have killed a baby if you've had an abortion. It should be your right. You are. How does that play for you pro-choice folks? I am defending you, but at the same time, I am calling you a horrible baby killer. Kent says, I'm pro-choice, but anti-abortion. I'm with Kent. Drop the E out of you. Josh says, Come on, guys. You're not allowed to kill babies until they're in the schools. Brandis says, who I love, Brandis. She says, your words are annoying the shit out of me. I, what do you mean? I'm on your side. I think you're a baby killer, too. We got to we gotta rip the Band-Aid off of this deal. You are a baby killer. If you've had an abortion... You are, I don't care what you say. No, it's an embryo. It's just, it's just a clump of cells. Uh, it's, it's a, you're a baby killer. That's what it is. Don't, don't try to talk me out of it. You gotta, this is what you need to do. We need to go to the next big uh, pro-choice rally and make t-shirts in support of the pro-choice people and raise money for them. All proceeds go to pro-choice causes. And the t-shirts need to say, I heart dead babies or I heart abortion. Uh, The only good fetus, the only good baby is a dead baby. Pro-choice 22. You know, this is what you need to do. You got to have these shirts made and then you can sell them. That would be a funny, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen bit. Show up at the abortion rally with I love abortion t-shirts. That might be something to see. So, all right. You can sit there and try to put uh, uh, a fancy language on this all you want, you baby killers. But you're a baby killer. Brandis says, I'm not saying I think, I think Woken. She's so mad. She's writing weird. I'm not saying I think Woken should fuck around and then say, oops, abortion time. Oh, she means women. But it's a necessary evil in some circumstances. I agree with you. Anyone who doesn't see that is an idiot. I get you. I'm with you. Yes. And in fact, I'm like this. If a lady gets a baby and she's like, yeah, but... This guy's ugly as shit. I don't want my kids to be ugly. I'm going to go have an abortion. Yes, of course. I'm with you. That's horrible. But it's your right. No one needs to be telling women what to do. You know what happens? Jesus Christ. If I looked at my wife and said, don't talk with food in your mouth. You know how bad, how much trouble I'm in when I do that? If I say, hey, yeah, hey. I mean, that's telling her what to do. Don't talk with food in your mouth. But if I, you know, that's bad enough. But if I say, yeah, uh, you got to keep that baby in you. Oh, God, you get your ass kicked. That is fucking horrible. No, you say, I don't know. That's your decision. I'm staying out of it. That is the safest way to a long life. Don't tell women what to do. Period. Let them make their own fucking decisions. 
Let's bring in the number one woman on the planet again. What now? So I was just talking abortion. Oh, no, I'm not even going to get into this. What I said was women should not be told what to do. Yeah. I, I hate agree. I hate the idea of it. Um, and I said that uh, anyone who has an abortion is a baby killer. Do you agree? What? Well, yes. Okay. Some people did not like that. And I went, well, what the fuck else do you want to call it? Yeah. This is a controversial subject that I don't like to talk about. That's why, and so that's why I don't. I'm not going to. I don't like, you know. So you, you want, do, do you, it's one of those things that you're not going to, you're not going to change anybody's mind. You're not going to get right, them to see right. the op- opposing side. So I don't do it. Why don't so. you, so are you telling me you would rather talk about, uh, anything but this? Yes. What's so, what's so hard about talking about it? I don't like to. I, I, it's, it's too controversial. It's too enraging. It's too, it. It's, you know, it makes people enraged. It makes people not like each other. So I'm, I don't want to do it. Are you sure you don't want to say anything very controversial? Nope. Got to go. I'm busy. All right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Well, she's a huge pussy. That's what that is. You got to say what's on your mind. You see, I'm perfect. I I actually have been able to say that if you have an abortion, you're a baby killer. And I will fight for the right to party and for your baby killing. That is, people are like, well, wait a minute. I want to be pissed at you. Well, you can't. I'm on your side. I have effectively nullified any rage by I will go to rallies, I will go to a pro-choice rally and say, we got to be able to kill babies. That's what, that's what you do. You plant your flag firmly. You don't sidestep it like some type of gutless twat. Maureen says Diana Smart. Bullshit. Bullshit. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. And let the, uh, everything will sort itself out. All right. Brandis says, nah, this chat contradicts that rage is in full effect. I don't think anybody's judging anyone in the chat. They look like they're doing okay. Cole says abortions and guns for all. Yeah. Abortions and guns for all. I agree with that. Melissa says, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Well, I, you got to give me something. You can't just throw that out. What's the bullshit? Corey trolling says, I'm not judging. I just think they're wrong. Well, he's a total troll. That's all you are. But all right, folks. Maureen says she said what she meant talking about Diana. No, she didn't. She sidestepped it like a weasel. That was a complete sidestepping of the topic at hand. All right. Handled. Abortion topic. Check. Handled with uh, ease and strength by your old pal, Eric Zane. No one can talk about abortion the way I can and actually make it a fun discussion. We, what'd you do on the show today, Eric? Ah, we had a fun talk about abortion. All right. So now that that's out there, no problem. All of this talk about abortion makes me has to, uh, have to pee. So I'm going to do just that. You guys sit there and fight amongst yourselves. And, uh... Oh my God. Corey says, honest question. If the Bible said (laughs) abortions were okay, uh, would this even be an issue asking the religious people if it said in the beginning, 
God made abortions. Oh, <laughs> no. Fuck. <laughs> now, Kenny says that's an idiotic question, but I, I actually think it's that's a that's a great question. If it said, okay, uh, love thy fellow neighbor. Uh, thou shall not uh, kill except abortions. Thou shall get an abortion. Uh, well, I mean, what would you do? I mean, I, hey, I'm just, I'm just, uh, just putting out a scenario there. I think that's actually a pretty ridiculous thing too. But it's, if you think about it, Corey says, why is it ridiculous? So you're saying we can pick and choose what parts of the religion we want? Couldn't that same logic go to people saying the Bible? saying gay marriage is bad. Brandis says, I'm religious and I, me too. And I don't see this as a religious issue, but that's because I'm pro-choice. I don't think it's a religious issue either at all. It's not. Hell, the people who made the Bible, (laughs) the people who wrote the Bible, they had never heard of abortion. We can't, we can't decide for them. If we could go into a time machine back when people were writing sacred scripture and, uh, and then say, all right, uh, just so you know, in the future, we have the ability to kill babies. Then, and only then would they then, hmm, let's contemplate this one. Should we allow it or should, I mean, that's really the only way. So that's an impossibility. We just need to know that there are other things at work here bigger than us. Text from Diana. Right. I'd stay away from this topic. You don't want to piss advertisers off and such. It's too touchy of a subject in my opinion. And I'm like, look, hey, I got this. Again, hands off, hands off my body. My body is this podcast. I run it as I see fit. Your job is to uh, monitor Pooh Bear points, be cute, and, uh, you know, yell at me and shit like that. But when it comes to the podcast, I make, I am the CEO. I am the big swinging dick of the Eric Zane Show podcast. One thing is true. I'm the fucking boss. No one, and that means no one can tell me what to do on my podcast. And when I see people quoting scripture like Brandis and Cole saying, my body, my choice, unless it's a vaccine, I know I am hitting the right buttons. Cole, by the way, um, Congratulations on your Colorado avalanche. Fuck the avalanche. They are just full of shit. I hate the Colorado avalanche. All Detroit Red Wings fans hate the Colorado avalanche. And of course, those fucking morons dent the cup. Some dumb dick skated out onto the ice and dented the cup. Which asshole was that? I'll get to it later, huh? So bad. Way to go. Jackass. Ah. All right. Over the weekend, we hosted a graduation party for a dear friend. Let me just say that uh, you've you've known about this, and that's why I was painting the outside of the house, and you know, kind of like uh, making the house look nice as best as I could. Uh, this was probably this is probably the nicest my house has looked since I moved in. That's all it takes is the threat of people visiting to get the mess relocation projects underway and various fixer upper things, so that the house doesn't look like shit. So um, we did that. 
And uh, like I said, the Pooh Bear points were at an all-time high when I got the garage, everything cleaned out of the garage. Saturday, woke up. I set up this uh, tent we had in the driveway for people to uh, sit underneath so the sun doesn't bake them and they can have their uh, taco bar, whatever it is, for the uh, for the graduates' party. And, uh, you know, just awesome. Good time. Um, when that was all getting started, before people got there, there's this local rental company that they um, they dropped off a bunch of chairs and a bounce house. Whenever we have a gathering like something like this, we always rent a bounce house so that uh, people can, like, when they bring their kids, their kids have something to do, you know? Otherwise, they're just bored. They're assholes. They end up fucking with something in the house or someone gets hurt. Or, you know, so what you do is just throw all the kids in the bounce house and they stay there. And then if there's any local rapists, they won't, the kids won't wander away and get raped. So this is all, all, these are all benefits of having the bounce house. And then I called my grandkids, my, well, my daughter-in-law and my son. I said, bring the kids over. We got a bounce house. It's got to be, there's a candy table. There's tacos. Come on over. Yeah. It's awesome. Every kid's sweating their ass off, running around the bounce house. Play. My house was fucking hopping. It was a place to be. So um, when the day starts, though, the rental company shows up, and it's one family of all Mexicans. And um, I'm not kidding you when I say they're all a family. They all, like, come out of all the doors of this vehicle, and in, in an instant, you've got your chairs You've got your bounce house set up. No one speaks any English except for the one lady. And she, it's kind of broken. And you pay her. She calls Diana, uh, uh, Diana, Diana, Diana. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Diana. I love you, Diana. She always says she loves us. She's great. In fact, they need a free ride. These people need a free ride. They are so fantastic. I got a funny ass story too about this. You're going to love this story. Come on. It's all about momentum. Come on. Hold on a second. I've got a question about the party rental company, period. Pick up, period. No, okay. All right, there you go. I'm going to try this again. Sorry. <laughs> Hello? What was the name of that party rental company that uh, all those Mexicans? Roman, Roman party rentals, I think. R-O-M-A-N, Roman? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and we've, we've worked with them before. They've probably brought that same bounce house, uh, bounce house over. You probably did. Although they do have like several of them, but. And they're in Jenison, Michigan? No, I think they're in Holland, actually. I'm not quite sure. Okay. How many Mexicans showed up? There's like 10 of them came flying out of the car, right? Out of the truck? Uh, no, just five. Okay. But they are, I talk about an efficient bunch. Yes. Absolutely stellar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Hey, oh, uh, by the way, what's the name of the lady who called you Diana? Do you, do you remember her I name? I don't know her name. I don't know her name. Uh, it might be on my Facebook, off, on my Facebook Messenger. Off the chat, but I'm is una I don't punta. know. I think it's like something that starts with the L, I think. Con mis nalgas cuando yo estoy cagando, cabrón. Okay. All right. I love you. Okay. See ya. Love yeah. you too. Bye. Bye. Tu madre es una puta. Good thing I didn't say that. Get everything set up. Par, uh, party begins, party ends, party is over. The next day, Sunday, early, they want to pick up their shit. So this is going to be a fast process. Again, five Mexicans fly out. The one guy, um, I think his name was Fittipaldi, he shows up to take care of the bounce house. So it's staked into the ground. And he's got to unhook it and stuff. But first, he's got to blow it up and kind of dry it off a little. 
So I, I, I see this activity going on. And then as that's happening, I see him kind of like um, react to something. Something has happened. I'm not sure what. I see him kind of like uh, lurch back. like Whoa! And then I see him uh, holding one of the stakes that he pulled out of the ground. And he's hitting the ground. And I'm like, well, that's weird. I didn't think anything of it. I thought about it for that long, and then I, it was gone. I, I was walking by the front door of the house as I come down the steps. I see him through the glass doing this for the Baldi. So I wander over to another part of the house. We're getting ready to go to mass. We go outside, and then uh, Fittipaldi goes, Senor, Senor. I go, yeah. He goes, I go, yes, Fittipaldi. What is it? And he doesn't. He hardly speaks any English. He goes, Desi Mouse, Desi Mouse. It's a mouse. It's a furry, furry mouse. A big mouse. And I go, uh, okay. And I walk over there and he gets, he picks up a stick so he can, and he's talking, he's kind of like trying to say in broken English, uh, the mouse burrowed underneath the grass. And so, um, he's kind of making this hand motion of it, like going under the grass. And the other guy, he didn't speak any English either. And Diana and I are standing next to each other and we figure out it's, he's describing a mole. Okay. He has discovered a mole. And so he's going to show me where the mole is. And so I'm like, well, how do you know where the mole is if it goes underneath the grass? I mean, they're, what they know how to do is hide from you. And if you happen to get one in the wild, he's going to take off on you. But then he, he, it's, it's not moving. The mole, he shows me and he flicks it with a stick and the mole is on its back. So he's discovered a dead mole and he wants to show it to me. Like when a cat kills something. And uh, so he's discovered the dead mole and I go, oh, wow. I go, so it was dead? And Fittipaldi goes, no, I killed it. <laughs> no, I killed it. And so that's what he was doing. He took the steak and he bashed the mole with it. So the mole is dead dead I don't, and he killed a fucking mole i go oh okay and I, I look at his part and i go he killed it i go does he always kill shit and then the other guy goes he kind of like puts his hands out it's like oh yeah like kind of like he's known for that you know he has that look on his face like oh what are we gonna do with finipaldi he's just killing shit again so he killed the fucking mole and then so boy i just got a fucking chuckle out of that he was like proud of it i killed it no i killed it it was great so cool. Uh, actually, I was a little bit heartbroken about that. I wouldn't have done that. Um, in fact, I think that same mole, when I would mow, I would see him run out. Like I would go over the spot where he is, but he's so low under the grass that the mower doesn't hit him, you know? And then I would see him take scurry away and I'd be like, ah, fuck it. I don't even give a shit. Go, I don't give a shit. I'm such a sucker for critters that... Um, even a mole as destructive as destructive as those things are, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So he did it. Well, that's the end of the mole. Uh, Patreon. Thank you so much to uh, people who signed up on Patreon over the weekend. Uh, I did get a few. I appreciate that. It was, uh, an ugly weekend. Obviously, uh, some of you are aware of, uh, the bullshit that went down, um, with, uh, Patriot Nick. And uh, the war is back on with Dean. So these are all things that are happening right now. But uh, I did get an influx of them. It's it's crazy. It's weird how that works out. People are like, yeah, you know what? It's time to sign up on Patreon. So I appreciate that. Uh, Always very helpful. Let's see who signed up. That would be Scott Kelly and Tom. Tom Swartwood. I appreciate that. And Jason Mays. Um put in a ton of money. I mean, it's, it's five or 10 bucks a month and he dropped a ton more. Did not have to do that. Jason Mays of uh, JM synthetics, but I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. And Megan, Megan signed up because she wanted to hear me bitching on Friday. <laughs> no, it's all good. Fine. Uh, process that flush it. It's done. It's like a fart in the wind. Nothing slows me down. All right, so there you go. Uh, this show happens on Patreon. I have a show on Patreon that I do when this one is done. Patreon.com slash Eric 
Zane. I would appreciate it if you signed up. If you give me a 5 or $10 a month donation, I will give you 15 plus hours of content on the Patreon. So we go for a couple hours uh, a day on this one and then more time on the Patreon. That's what help, uh, helps keep the lights on here on the Eric Zane Show podcast. So thank you so much if you've been part of it in the past. Um, if you're thinking about signing up, that would be very, very cool. I'll uh, wor- I work my ass off on it, and I would love you to be part of the Patreon. Thank you. My policy shop insurance, 616-914-4070. If you need health insurance and your employer does not offer it, or you are between jobs, or um, you are self-employed, you need health insurance. Frank Fuss at My Policy Shop Insurance can help you get your health insurance through Obamacare. 616-914-4070. Also, Full House Comedy. We got comedy this weekend going on. Uh, If you want uh, tickets to a comedy event, go to fullhousecomedy.com. Who is there this weekend? All right. Going on uh, Thursday, we don't have shows until July 7th. Jeff Horsty uh, is going to be at uh, Howard City Lanes. Jeff is also at Creston Brewery. Nord Davis is in town that same weekend. That is going to be excellent. So there you go. If you want... Uh, Tickets, go to fullhousecomedy.com and uh, check it out. Uh, Let's see. I better get to a couple more because I just went for an hour or so and uh, I have no sponsors done. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, 616-532-6600. Uh, Irvines.com. That's E R Vines. E R Vines.com. 616 532 6600. Any type of uh, European, domestic, or Asian vehicle, with the exception of Volkswagen, right in uh, just about the center of Grand Rapids, Irvines Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Uh, they have early bird drop off, after hours pickup. And uh, free loaner cars available. Their techs are the best in the business. In fact, the dealerships, when they get in the weeds, they call upon Irvine's. But don't just take my word for it. Check out the Google reviews, Irvine's.com. All right. I got an email. Mm, No, I take it back. I don't want to read that. If you ever want to reach out to me on the show, the best way is by sending an email. Okay. Eric at ericzaneshow.com. I'd love to hear from you. That is the Shoreliners striping inbox. This weekend, I went out to Berlin Raceway. Uh, called upon Stu McAllister. He's been wanting to go. So... And it was a bummer because we got about halfway through the night's races. And shit, it started to rain. And uh, they ended up calling it. We waited out a little bit. It was too bad. They ended up calling the damn thing. So we were out of luck. And so uh, there you go. But still, we had a good time. And they invited us to be in the uh, pace car. So it's actually a truck. You get in this damn thing, and when you're watching it, like from the stands, uh, in my opinion, it looks like the pace car is moving five miles an hour, and the race cars are moving like eight miles an hour. But that's not true at all. All right. A word for FitBod, which is an app that is going to help you get in shape, stay in shape, help you to live longer, avoid injury, be more durable, and just overall improve your quality of life and your health. Believe me, I know what it's like to start and stop exercise programs. The FitBod app, though, is helping me stay motivated. There's no question that my overall strength being improved because of the FitBod app is going to help me destroy Mike Ball in the Grand Rapids Half Marathon coming up in October. At the end of this, I'm going to tell you how to take advantage of the FitBod app. 
After you download the FitBot app and you put your information about your age, your weight, your fitness goals, things like that, it's going to tailor specific workouts for each of your body parts for each days of the week. It's a fantastic way to track what you're doing and stay on top of it and keep you motivated. That's what I love so much about this. Basically, they take the guesswork out of what you're supposed to be doing. Gone are the days when you just march into the gym and start slinging around weights and hope that something works out. What's going to happen to you there is you're going to lose motivation because you're not going to see any results or worse you're going to get hurt tapping into the FitBot app is going to help you achieve your goals and trust me after you start seeing the results of all the hard work you're putting in you're going to stay motivated that's the key and with FitBot guiding you every step of the way that's going to happen sooner rather than later it's time to quit talking and finally start doing something hey i'm right there with you i've eaten myself out of shape and i'd like to get back into shape the FitBot app is going to help me do that let's get motivated and do it together you can build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with FitBot. and how about this you get 25 percent off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash Zane. So let me say that all again, okay? You go to fitbod.me slash Zane, and you can try the app for free. You can also get 25% off of your subscription when you do that. fitbod.me slash Zane. 25% off when you sign up today at fitbod.me slash Zane. Zane. All right. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Better H E L P. Now, this is awesome. I'm telling you, you need to talk to somebody. Everyone's life is different. And at a moment's notice, with no warning, you could have something arrive in your life that you suddenly have to deal with. Now, the old school way was to just bottle that up and, uh, you know, pretend it'll work itself out and it never does. And there's always something of gigantic magnitude that takes place because you did not talk about it. I have benefited from this type of therapy, just like what is offered through my friends at BetterHelp. And you can benefit from this too, but you don't have to leave your home, okay? This is not like some crisis line. It's not self-help or anything like that. This is 100% professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. BetterHelp Online Therapy will assess your needs as you get started and will match you up with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Like this one from Lynette, who wrote, My therapist is very understanding and aware of my concerns, and she wants to make therapy something that is beneficial to me. She's helped me a lot with what I've needed help with, as well as things I'm now starting to realize. So what do you have to do to take advantage of this? First of all, there's a special offer for listeners of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Get 10% off of your first month at BetterHelp dot com slash zane that's 10 percent off your first month of online therapy better h-e-l-p dot com slash zane you got this you're gonna do great betterhelp.com slash zane gary the pace car driver said we were going about 70 miles an hour now you're going around the 7 16th of a mile track Uh, bank to some degree on the corners, Uh, even on the straightaways, there's some banking. So he's constantly turning left. And I had no idea how uh, difficult it would be to not be thrown to the side of the vehicle as we were whipping around the track. I have video, I think. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah, I do have video of this exact thing as it unfolded. So I'm going to share that with you now. As we were in the back of the truck with Gary, uh, I think this guy's about 75 years old. He's an old timer. Here you go. What is your name? Gary. Gary? How long have you been doing this? Any chicks ever throw their underwear at you, Gary? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Not at a racetrack. Not at a racetrack. Other place. Forty years, holy moly! Years 
Oh, four years. I said 40. We're a little deaf. 24 years. 24, okay, 24 years working here and last four years as pace car. Okay, gotcha. How do you get to have the honor of driving the pace car? Stu says, how do you get the honor of driving the pace car? He said, you, he, said that, he, says he asked for it. That's it. I want to drive. You were doing what? The record, the record truck. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then there's like a lull in the action. We're kind of like just getting ready for this uh, for this action to start now. So we pick it up. Now, this is cool. And by the way, uh, I am going to be giving a pace car ride away to one of you. And you must do this. I had, I had done this once before, but I had forgotten how fun this is. This is fucking sweet. I think these are the uh, super late model cars. The, the car is just ripper on the track at like 100 miles an hour. It's absolutely awesome. Okay, so... As you can see, it's no problem. Gary hasn't yet gotten up to speed. And by the way, uh, I said to him, I go, Gary, you ever get the urge to like race with the drivers? And in true old man voice style, he goes, you're about to find out. And so that is true because when he got into the gas, Stu's hanging on. He's got his arm out the window, hanging on to the roof of the car for dear life and and I am, I'm literally getting thrown across the thing, trying to get my seatbelt on. I couldn't even fucking grab it. There was, you could feel the G-forces throwing you. I don't know if it was G-force. It might have just been centrifugal force. I have no idea. But it was ridiculous. Now, as soon as Gary gets into it, I react. He hasn't yet started to really hit the gas. Here we go. Jesus. Holy shit. Holy fuck. I didn't realize how intense this was. <laughs> just killing it. Come on, Gary. Get it, Gary. Okay, it doesn't look it's you it doesn't do it justice here, but we're going very fast and you cannot I'm trying to keep upright in the fucking car and then all of a sudden I can't even shoot the video. Look at I'm like shooting the seat. Jesus. Stu goes, Jesus. Sue Stu has support socks on. This is so intense. Okay, now now I'm putting my seatbelt on and Stu sees that. Okay, now, now we're slowing down, seatbelts on, and then now the last thing they need to do is this driver, Gary, when he gets to the area where the vehicle has to get off and the race is starting, he, he has to do the sharpest fucking turn in the world, and it's, I mean, shit, I'm waiting for this thing to roll over. It is. That was awesome. Here we go. This is a white flag. All right, now here's the. Okay, here's the big turn off. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so now we're off the track, and now the green flag now. And then off they go. Race has begun. Woo. 15 seconds. That was freaking sweet. Gary. 15 seconds later. 
15 seconds later, they're they're already around the track. I'm telling you, man, I love the races. So fucking sweet. Holy shit. Really cool. I got to get Stu on. Talk about our adventure. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> Stu said he did. Uh, I'll just save it till I get him on here. Eric, uh, the question is, why did you wait so long to buckle up? <laughs> I didn't realize Gary was going to be a fucking lunatic. <laughs> I know I had done that once before, but I had forgotten how intense it was. Oh, dude, it was, I, I wasn't expecting that, man. I'm just thinking we're take, we're going to take a leisurely ride around the track. We're going to veer off and then the racers can go crash into the wall. Right. That's what I'm <laughs> thinking. And it was not that. No, it was amazing. It was, uh, I, I, at a time I was like, are we going to crash? I mean, I was a little concerned. Oh, yeah. I thought we were going to crash. I was like, Gary has finally lost his shit, and we're all going to die. <laughs> Gary's been waiting for his big fucking moment. And uh, did he, you, uh, yeah, wait, because when I said to him, I go, hey, do you ever get a, the urge to race? And he said, you're about to find out. <laughs> Gary uh, Gary's very sedate. Yeah, you know, I think um, – it's that those are the ones you worry about those people. Oh, oh yeah. Gary's doing something at home. He's skinning live cats or something. Oh like yeah. I, I am certain of it. I, I, in fact, I was waiting. It wouldn't have surprised me if his dick popped out and he started to beat off with the free hand. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, I can't believe like, when he told, when we asked him how fast we were going, and he's like only sixty, and I was like only sixty. Yeah, but, he said oh, sixty God, to I can't seventy. Imagine if we were going hundred. Yeah, it and when you see it from the stands, it looks like five. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like when are these guys going to start moving? Right. Right. So you think about how intense that was. Imagine if you're the drivers. Do you think that race car drivers are athletic? They have to be. They have to be in a decent shape just to, like, hold the wheel and kind of steady themselves. They have to be in shape. Plus, the uh, uh, mental focus, I think, is pro could be some of the uh, uh, most intense uh, focus in order to complete that task. It seems ridiculous. Did you ever see a film called uh, Ford versus Ferrari? No, I wanted to see that. Oh, I missed it. fuck. My God, you got it. It's a great, great fucking movie. Uh, sure. Dennis says, you've never seen driver Jimmy Spencer. That guy was like 400 pounds. He's a fat fuck, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, gravity was holding him. In right, place. right. <laughs> um, okay. So now overall, the the, the whole event, it was, yeah. uh, you didn't expect what we saw because they have a pretty nice setup there at the track. Yeah, I, uh, through the day job of Doth, I we deliver to a lot of racetracks, and most of them are just fucking mud. <laughs> and uh, so th this one, I was I was super surprised, like, how cheap the tickets were, and we didn't pay for parking, and all the ugly people. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I like being there, dude. I was an 11. It's amazing. I th yeah, I th th that was the quote you said. Man, uh, if I come here, I am I'm super handsome. <laughs> yeah, I need to go back every weekend. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I was. It was a bummer that it started raining on us, though. But uh, still, it was a good time. Yeah, we got our we got our lap in with the pace car. We got to be crazy, Gary. It was good times. Oh yeah. All right. Well. Very good. It was good to see you. Uh, I, yeah. I, I saw you. I got the video. We just showed the video. It was, uh, it was fucking sweet. It was great, man. I, I appreciate you inviting me because I'm not going to lie. I probably never would have gone on my own. I never would have gone. It never would have been a thought. But now I'm like going, yeah, I'll go back for sure. The audience loves your fashionable diabetes socks as well. 
I know I'm gonna die, dude. Yeah, that's the blood <laughs> clot thing. I mean, it's important Fucking that blood clot. Stay away from them, everybody. Very important that you wear those. I, yeah, I, you I know, know what? I should have gotten a pair so that we looked like gay lovers. <laughs> hey, those guys got matching socks. Those idiots. <laughs> Stu, earlier on the show, I opened up this Pandora's box and I said, oh "I support your right to murder your baby." Jesus. <laughs> God, why did you say that? Well, that's what it is. I I prefer not to think of it that way. <laughs> well, you can you can uh, put flowery language on it as much as you want, but I mean, at the end of the day, uh, what was alive is now dead because of you. <laughs> Not because of me. I had nothing to do with it. Well, I will support when I say right you, to do whatever when they I need say to you, do. I mean the person who the who is the murderer. Yes, it's on them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, well, I appreciate you as always. I'll talk to you down the road. Thanks, man. All I'll right, talk to you. Get out of here. Let's do McAllister. Amanda is uh, suggesting that's straddling the fence. How? how? I, no, it isn't at all. I am pro-choice to the bone. There is nothing that uh, that is fence straddling about it. It's 100% accurate and the easiest way to approach the elephant in the room. My God. What do you mean by that, Amanda? I will call your ass up and I will get... Uh, Maybe you need a little bit, uh, the actual spoken word can help you clarify. I'm talking to a lot of people today. Yes. Hello. Hold on a second. Let me put your boy, yeah. you, boy, it's been a lot of activity on this show. You know, if you're a listener of this show and you recently got banned, <coughs> Nick, it's a bad day. Uh -oh. It's a bad day to not be enjoying the Eric Zane Show podcast. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What what did you do? I didn't turn off um Yeah. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm I still here. Yeah, I didn't turn off Twitch. Yeah, Sorry. Yep, 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 yep. It it wasn't doing anything on my end. It's just, Okay, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was hearing myself. So sorry about that. Anyway, um so, uh, y y your suggestion is that I am straddling the fence? In, wh in exactly. which way? Because the pro-life stance is murdering babies. That's not straddling the fence. It's totally pro-choice. No, you're saying, you're saying that you choose or that you, you support them murdering babies. So you're pro-choice, but you're still pro-life. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter yeah, for me your, personally. I mean, I wouldn't want to murder a baby, but there are people who love to murder babies. But if you <laughs> if you take one if you take one stance or the other, then you would say either I choose for you to do whatever you want to do, or I don't want you to do that because it's murdering babies. So for you to put it together, yeah. you're straddling the fence. <laughs> no, it's so not. You don't take one no, no, it is the other. Because my hilarious. no, you idiot. Because my I can't tell anyone what to do. I can only tell me what to do. So I have told. I, know. I have told I know. me. But I, you I, telling the you telling somebody that them having an abortion is murdering babies is the problem life stance but if you tell them that you support them to do that that's the yes stance. i so I, you're doing both you are struggling that fence and, and you don't get and your it, well, in trouble you can call in the it what meantime, you want you're from straddling that you can call it whatever you want, but I am looking big picture, and I say yes to all baby murderers. I just think it's hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> I'm fucking crying. <laughs> okay, so I will fight for your right to murder. There you go. <laughs> and make sure you wear something so that your butt crack don't hurt. Yep, okay. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. All right. Okay, God Bye. bless you. Bye-bye. You got to fight for your right to murder. Uh, no, in case you're wondering, uh, Nick got hurt.
because for a period of a week and three days, I pulled back from the comments and stopped saying hi to him. And that lack of attention hurt him. And um, he decided that he did not want to participate in the show anymore. And so that was the end of it. That is uh, that is that is a bummer. Uh, he will be missed. He is no longer allowed to participate. And that's unfortunate because he would have loved this discussion on baby murder. Dean, um, the war is back on. Uh, he once again started it and I finished it. And now he is no longer allowed to participate. And, uh, anything nice I said about him, I take it all back. It's all off the table. I don't want to see that guy again. And I wish he would go inside of some woman's womb who would then choose to have an abortion. And I would support that right for a woman to abort Dean. Then that would be, that would make me very happy there. It's all out on the table. And now everybody's up to speed. Now everybody is up to speed. Don't, don't shit in my backyard. That's all you got to do. I just stole that quote from somebody. Thank you. Uh, all right. A and E heating and cooling six one six five one six eighty five seventy nine. Joe Martinez and my good friends at A and E heating and cooling. If you need a tune up on your air conditioner, if you need a replacement, six one six five one six eighty five seventy nine. Just seventy nine bucks for that. That thing needs to be running in tip top shape. We're getting a little bit of a reprieve. From the uh, blistering hot temperatures, they will be back by the end of the week, though. 616-516-8579 if you are in West Michigan for A&E heating and cooling. I got a mortgage guy. All right, so let's say during all this nonsense with um, uh, economic issues with um, gas, inflation, you maybe you ran up a few thousand dollars on your credit card. Well, because of the interest rate going up, you're now paying 20% on that $3,000 every month. That's a lot of money. Okay, get some money out of your home and pay that off. Better you pay it at five and a quarter than at 20%. Reach out to Mario, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage to find out more about that. 231-332-6505. for anywhere in the listening audience, any location with the exception of South Carolina, Maine, Alaska, and Hawaii, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. If your credit's great, no problem. If your credit's so-so, oh boy, it might take a little navigating, but he can help you out. 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Kent County Health Department. Uh, let me say that again in English. Kent County Health Department. Reminds you to take advantage of their services. You go to accesskent.com slash health. And your local health department does all these things too. But if you are in the Kent County area, uh, go to accesskent.com slash health. Uh, Click on personal services for information about HIV testing. We are in HIV awareness month right now. And uh, if you or someone you know or love is exposed or, um, you know, maybe through uh, sharing of a needle, blood transfusion, perhaps, uh, uh, well, you know how it is, how you can, you know how that is transmitted. Uh, and you think that you have been exposed, go to the website, accesskent.com slash health, uh, personal health services. Click on that on the left-hand side. And there's information about getting an HIV test, confidential, of course, and um, quickly done. The key is to get diagnosed and then get uh, tested, I should say, determine if you have been exposed, and then go from there. No longer is that a death sentence for a person, but uh, it's important that you uh, find that out so that you don't expose anybody else to um, to that. So accesscat.com slash health. You can also learn about the WIC program and also various uh, vaccines that um, your children may need in order to get back into school. Measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, uh, meningitis, things like that. All right. 
Uh, speaking of vaccines, someone who didn't get one, Rick from TC Paintball, uh, just getting over COVID, but uh, we are working on rescheduling Paintball War number 19 in memory of Patriot Nick. Uh, TC Paintball War number 19 in memory of Patriot Nick will happen before you know it. Uh, and so I'll be looking to all the folks who want to join me at TC Paintball. In the meantime, you can head to TC Paintball and book a party for an upcoming Saturday or drop in during the week, tcpaintballgr.com. You're not going to believe this. I have to do the rare two PP in one show. So don't go anywhere. I got to go again. <clears throat> All right, Corey, he's no quit calling people names. He's referring to Judge Thomas as an asshole. That's horrible. Keep it above board. I would never do that. What the hell is wrong with you? Okay, I want to break down a couple of sports things. Uh, one is the fucking moron who dropped the Stanley Cup. Avalanche win that thing. They hadn't won it since uh, 01. Uh, they're getting ready for the team photo. And watch this dick. He's going to come skate. Oh, no. There, there it is right there. A guy drops the Stanley Cup. Oh, look at it. Look at the dent in this thing. Jesus. How can you look at look at how it's all straight there now? Because this guy dropped the Stanley Cup. This is like, you know, so incredibly valuable, the Stanley Cup. And this fucking dick skates over and then uh, he's, you know, wipes out and breaks his fall with the cup. Look at. Oh, no. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, shit. Look at this guy's like, oh, no. Watch the reactions. The reactions are, are just what's spectacular. Moving on. There was a baseball game last night, yesterday, and uh, we had a, oh, my God. This was the Angels and the Mariners. This was spectacular. Second inning, the Mariners uh, pitcher throws at, uh, or the uh, 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 Angels pitcher throws at some dude from the Mariners, and then the fight is on. Here you go. Opportunity to get through the lineup a few more times, and he has pitched out of the pen in Salt Lake. And he just hit Winker, Erica, with the first pitch. Scott Service. And- Manager's like, yeah, throw him out, throw him out, throw him out. Let me back that up here. Opportunity to get through the lineup a few more times, and he has pitched out of the pen in Salt Lake. And he just hit Winker, Erica, with the first pitch. Scott Service is calling for him to be thrown out of the game and winker winker is trying to get towards phil nevin and the angels winker's down here he's over at the dugout and so he's going to start fighting with anyone and the benches have cleared and justin upton comes in and we have chaos oh yes so great this is the only time baseball is good bullpen's coming in now see these guys from the bullpen are running in and they're all like together why doesn't one like punch a guy right in the gut when he's running in from the bullpen this guy's got a fucking bat holy shit That looks like fun. I would love that. We could get, um, we could get Patriot, uh, Patriot Zaniacs, and the rest of us, and we could just have a fucking fight. We could go to the ballpark and just have a fight and settle settle the things once and for all. Wouldn't that be great? I support Zaniac brawl. There's been enough division in the group that I think it's time for um, audience fight. 
I think there's been enough uh, anger building that we need to go to a ballpark and uh, we'll put Patriot Nick uh, at home plate and then I'll pitch it and I'll hit him in the head and then uh, the CTE will run out of his ears and then we'll have a huge fucking fight right on the field. I think it's a great idea. Now, it starts to, like, settle down. And then everybody's thinking, okay, it's over. You know, just watching these guys talk it out. Okay, it's over. Go back to your benches. And then... And then right about, right about now, it starts to pick up again. It is not done. Look at this shit. These two. Oh, this is sweet. If you're listening to the audio podcast, obviously go back and uh, click on the link to watch this shit. This guy's like, you broke my glasses. Oh, fuck. That is just a mass of humanity on both sides. You got Shohei Otani. I just want to see it go the way of like hockey, okay? Where they actually pause, they skate away from people, and then they actually fight like the way fucking men fight. This is all. This is is a sucker punch festival. Baseball fights are the worst. <laughs> says even fights are boring in baseball <laughs> okay but watch this this dude he goes and uh he grabs his own shit and throws it at the mariners dugout watch this this guy whoever this asshole is he grabs all of the sunflower seeds watch this motherfucker take that How stupid is that? Shot put of sunflower seeds in, in history. That asshole just threw all of his sunflower seeds. Okay. So then, uh, late in the game, it's tied, and I love this guy, the Shoei Otani. That's the dude who can throw the ball 300 miles an hour, and he can just flat out rake. So a pitcher who's a regular uh, everyday player when he's not pitching and and just crushes the ball. Look at the listen to the audio of this home run and how the crack of the bat is when he just when he crushes this ball and the pitcher immediately is like, "Oh, fuck me." 1469 on base plus slugging in the last 11 here at home. Hammer. Oh, 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 fuck me. Look at how big this dude is. That baseball is covered in 62 feet. Wow. Well, he got himself in the count. Change up up. Got his zone. And wow, that is that is fucking beautiful. You know what? Think about Walker Trotty one more time. Look what happens. Tied it right up there. Yes. Shohei Otani, 16th home run. I want to see that again. I just it's it's the sound of that bat. On base plus slug. Listen to this. Here at home. Hey, oh shit! <laughs> oh my God! Did he hit that thing? In the last eleven here at home. Hammer! Oh! I can't get enough of that. And the pitcher's like, ah, oh, God! Fucking beautiful! Holy shit! Uh. Kenny just getting a wind of this. Yeah, we've talked about him many times. He says, that guy's a pitcher. Yeah, he's like one of the best pitchers in the league, Shoei Otani. Uh, he is fucking sweet. And uh, and uh, every when he's not pitching, he's out in the outfield. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Uh, all right. That's enough of that. Where were we? Oh, God. I forgot about this. Uh, with the Roe versus Wade thing, um, I need to go and get into this story. Hmm. U.S. Representative Mary Miller. Um, she is on stage, I guess, campaigning? Or just talking, I guess? Uh, she is a representative of a Republican from Illinois. She's a big right-to-life person. And now, I don't believe that what she did here was, I think it was a slip of the tongue. But what a fantastic, fantastic slip of the tongue gaff this was. Republican who, I mean, let's be honest here. In the last couple of years, uh, the Republican Party has been kind of like uh, the party of white supremacy. There, I said it. She's on stage with the grand wizard, Donald Trump. When she wants to say this is a victory for right to life, she fucks it up and says the wrong thing entirely. This is seriously one of my favorite clips now of all time. Absolutely incredible. I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. <laughs> I want to thank you for the victory for white life yesterday. Thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. Oh, fuck. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, President Trump. It's a, such an honor to be able to welcome you. I'm so honored to have your endorsement. Trump, look at that smirk on his fucking face. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want oh, to thank God, you. That sounds bad. For the historic Victory for white life in the Supreme <laughs> Court yesterday. White life and Trump. He's like, hey, I think uh, I, 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 I wonder if anyone noticed that she said uh, white life there. And, you know, he's like, well, well, that's even better. Our victories for life. I wonder how many abortions Trump has paid for in his life. I'll bet you he has paid for 100 abortions to hookers he's had sex with. There is not a chance in hell that he has never said uh, to someone, we must go murder that baby. I can promise you that. Life and the Second Amendment would never have been possible if the never Trump rhinos had gotten their way. <laughs> Shit. Okay. So that's uh, Mary Miller. Uh, her spokes, her spokesman, uh, he was pretty pissed off about the whole thing. Now, she drew fierce backlash over this. And, I mean, if she had just said, oh, my God, I can't believe I just said white life. Of all the things I shouldn't have said that uh, was going to draw somebody's attention. But whatever, she just kept on going. Victory for white life. Uh, I don't for a second think that she really believes that. I'm not like that. I mean, come on now. Uh, Miller's campaign said Saturday night that uh, she misread. And I do believe that. You can clearly see she is reading off a piece of paper. She meant to say right to life. Miller's spokesman Isaiah Wartman said. Uh, the, stash, uh, the statement unleashed a forceful rebuke on social media, likening Miller to a white supremacist and recalling her quoting Adolf Hitler on January 6, 2021. Of all the people, God dang it. 
She later apologized. I don't know what she said then. Uh, her campaign manager was like, oh, yeah, they're just doing this because, uh, you know, whatever. He, he's pitting uh, uh, the left against the right, saying it's all the mainstream media's fault that they're making a big deal out of this. And, and, and I kind of agree. I mean, anyone with even fucking half a brain would know that that was just a misspeak. It happens. Anyone who believes that she actually... Now, maybe it was subliminal. I guess it's possible that she might only be interested in white life. I'm not sure. I mean, I can't speak for her. But probably not. What was her quote uh, quoting Adolf Hitler? Back on January 6, 2021, obviously, that was a big day for us all. Uh, Illinois Congresswoman says Hitler was right on one thing. A newly sworn in Congresswoman from Southern Illinois quoted Adolf Hitler. She spoke outside the U.S. Capitol saying the German Nazi leader was right on one thing. If we win a few elections, we're still going to be losing unless we win the hearts and minds of our children. This is the battle. Miller, Miller is heard saying in the footage, Hitler was right on one thing. He said, whoever has the youth has the future. Okay. You know... Probably not a good idea to attribute the quote. You probably could have gotten away with it, Representative Miller, by leaving that part out. And you could very easily have just, you know, quoted the We Are the World song and says, I believe that children are the future. You could have gotten away with it. You didn't have to go to the Hitler card. My God. So now you have a body of work where Miller on January 6th quotes Adolf Hitler saying, I believe children are the future. Adolf Hitler got that one right, she said. And then she says, thank you for saving white life or whatever the fuck it is. So now whether it's a gaffe or not, you still got great shit that someone is going to use against her in a a series of, uh, no doubt, uh, election commercials that will be seen eventually, so. That's the way it goes. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to get into the story about the uh, guy who worked worked at Burger works at Burger King, and um, you may have seen this. He's he's worked at Burger King for twenty seven years, which you gotta wonder about someone who's working at Burger King for twenty seven years. And I mean, he's a cook and a cashier. His name is Kevin Ford. Now, if you work at Burger King for 27 years and you are still an entry-level employee, something's gone wrong. It means you've been reasonably proficient at actually cooking the food and taking the order, but you have little acumen for anything else. One could make the argument that after six months of working at a Burger King, If you have any degree of skill or people skills or ability, you would quickly move up the ladder to various levels of shift manager, things like that. This guy's worked there for 27 years. And, um, well, what happened was Burger King, the, whoever owns the uh, Burger King restaurant gave the guy a goodie bag for his years of service. And, um, he, um, in this clip, he's opening up the goodie bag and someone is shooting video. Now he's not snarky in the video. Okay. He's just actually, he's so stupid that he believes that this is a good thing. He believes that this isn't insulting in any way because he's super dumb, very lovable, kind, but one of the dumbest people on the planet. He worked for Burger King for 27 years, and this is how they rewarded him. Okay, so you got Starbucks cup. You got the you got the candy. You got a you got another piece of shit. Two pins. A, a couple of sharpies. Look at this. A couple of keys. I don't know what that is. Drugs, maybe. Two lifesavers. Lifesavers. 
So and he got he didn't get two movie tickets. He got a movie ticket. They gave him a movie ticket. To show what they, you know their appreciation for, uh, for loyalty and for all you've done for the company. This is my war for what for 27 years. Thank you, guys. Okay, he now now he is not jaded. I'm not even kidding either. He's he's like, oh my god, this is awesome. He's like, um, he's super dumb. And and uh, I I hate to say it, but uh, unfortunately that's that's the way it is. Uh, he had to have someone speak on his behalf that this is fucking bullshit. Now, um, and that's good that they did that. That's good that someone actually convinced him. Hey, this is insulting to you. You worked there 27 years, and uh, and they they gave you a, a thing of, of of lifesavers and a couple of sharpies. So what he needs to do is he needs to take that fucking bag. And uh, uh, dip it in the fryer so it's molten, and then throw it at the manager and cause some type of third degree burns on them. Uh, uh, take everything out of the till and be on his way. But this is a sweet soul. Dumb, yes. Okay. But sweet, absolutely. So now, because of this, I think someone on his behalf, it might have been a family member, uh, made a big deal about it. And now. Um, the, the video has gone viral and people are stepping up. Uh, the article talks about how 54 year old Kevin Ford. Yeah. He, and the reason why he got this 27 year, uh, uh, prize is because he's never missed a day of work. Okay. He's sincerely an amazing worker. B really, really great. Okay. The incident resonated with people who felt saddened and enraged about the items he had received. They thought, man, maybe there should be a little bit more. Now, I don't agree. I think um, whatever he makes in a wage for what he does is absolutely appropriate. I think that this bag of Reese's Pieces is too much. I would say maybe one Reese piece would be okay. Kenny, I know you're dying. Look at this is so typical of Kenny. <laughs> I hope Eric includes the update on this story. What do you think you're dealing with a fucking child here? Of course I have the update on the story. See, fuckface Kenny wants to give it away. And he can't help himself. He has to say, he says, just saying. Yeah, that's that's usually with the case. You just say too much. As usual, you occasionally need a fastball in your head. Just shut it. You just shut your mouth. I There is an update. I'll get to it. Of course I'm going to get to it. I get to everything. I have everything in control of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Cole writes, I hope the update is they fired him. And they should have. You're right. They should have fired him. Because he made the company look bad. I can't even get behind that. So this guy is so thankful. Uh, He did uh, weigh in a little further, though. He was interviewed by TMZ, Mr. Ford, and uh, he had this to say. I'm happy about anything. I'm thankful for anything I get. I'm not not that type of person. Believe me, I've been through a lot. So That means he's addicted to drugs. I'm happy about what I got, but I did want my coworkers. I worked for uh, uh, the Culinary Union 226 Las Vegas, you know, and... uh, Whoops. Um, they work for themes, different themes out there. So a lot of times you can be working for Burger King. You can be working for uh, any place. There's all these different restaurants and things. This guy is not nearly as stupid as I thought he was. He's there. And it's a, it's a great company. You know, I've been there 27 years. Uh, but um, like most big corporations, they've kind of lost touch with their workers, you know. And All right, I don't want to hear this because if you're not going to sit there and rage out or sound dumb, I don't want anything to do with this. Okay. 
All right. Where does this go now, though? Well, of course. It goes the route of a GoFundMe. I believe, I believe in anything that the daughter of Ford here said, yep, you know, uh, I've got to go fund me for my dad because he's so amazing and he works so hard. It is now up to $159,050. His daughter, the man in that video is my father. He's worked at his job for 27 years. And yes, he has never missed a day of work. He originally began working at his job, blah, blah, blah. Single father when he gained custody of me and my older sister 27 years ago. Then as our family grew and he remarried, he continued to work here because of the amazing health insurance that was provided through his employer because it was unionized which got all four of his daughters through high school and college with full health care coverage. So basically, he works at Burger King, but he's not struggling. No, it's a unionized Burger King job. If you think this is like the one down the corner, uh, around the corner here in Michigan, that it's not unionized, that pays 11 bucks an hour, it's not like that at all. This guy was able to support his family. Uh, Yeah, it's not the most glamorous job or whatever, you know? So what? And he's got full health care. I can think of about a billion other ways, uh, more uh, better reasons to spend $159,050. Coming up on retirement, he gets to retire. Yeah, he's going to be able to, he's coming up on retirement. He's 54 fucking years old. Who retires at 54? So Burger King guy works there for 27 years. Oh yeah, coming up on retirement at 54. Let's go give him $159,050. GoFundMe is so fucked. This is such bullshit. This rich fuck should give all of this money away. My God. All you got to do is... This is probably a, a setup. He probably made the goodie bag. And they said, all right, now this is our plan. Just act like you're happy with all this shit that we're giving you, okay? And then uh, your daughter will make a GoFundMe, and then the next thing you know, you're going to have 200G just because you kept a positive outlook on life and a good attitude when really he's probably like a fucking black white supremacist like Clayton Bigsby or something like that. My God. Oh, he's $160,000. And you know who's uh, leading the charge? Fucking David Spade. Of course, some celebrity asshole. David Spade supports viral Burger King worker after underwhelming anniversary gift. Keep up the good work. This piece of shit gave this other piece of shit $5,000. My God. Sam the Jew indicates it was premeditated. He knew it would create buzz and a GoFundMe. I tend to agree. Kenny, is it funny how I got all the details of the story right? Jeez, I sure need a producer like you, Kenny. The fuck is wrong with you? Of course I got it. Yeah, I sure hope he doesn't miss the details. God, look, I've said this before and I'll say it again. More of me, less of you. And that goes for all of you. You all know how much better I am than you at everything. So of course I'm going to get my job correct. Unbelievable. I'm just pissed off that this asshole is going to wind up with $200,000. I'm just pissed off. I'm pissed off that he even got the Reese's Pieces just for doing his job. David Spade. This is ridiculous. How stupid. GoFundMe sucks. There's, again, there should be someone who's in charge of GoFundMe 
at one guy or girl who says, no, this is stupid. And then uh, at the end of it, they have to decide and they, they'll take the $160,000 and they'll uh, give it to feed the poor or uh, clothe the homeless or something like that. It's a GoFundMe judge. And you say that at the beginning. If your charity sucks, we take your money. It's bullshit. All right. That's that. Uh, thank you to Blue Frost IT, the managed IT service provider for the Eric Zane Show podcast, bluefrostit.com, 616-285-50. If your business is in need of any tech support, call upon Blue Frost IT. Thank you very much. Bennett Flooring Installation. Get the flooring installed from Bennett Flooring Installation. They've done two rooms in our, uh, they did my whole basement. And they did a bedroom upstairs uh, on the main level. Thank you so much. Bennett Flooring Installation. Uh, This is great because, you know, the way they do it is if you want to go ahead and rip out the old flooring, whatever it may be, that's a lot of labor. Get the room ready. That's going to save you a lot of cash. 616-318-0167. Uh, hold on a second. Once again, 616-318-0167 for Bennett Flooring Installation. Online at BennettFlooringInstallation.com. If you are in West Michigan, call upon them to get the flooring installed. The flooring I want you to install, I want you to purchase from Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. Great place to buy all your flooring. You will save money. I can promise you if you go there and price that out, it's cheaper than anyone else. Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet is down the street from the main store in Granville, Michigan on Chicago Drive. Kent, drop the E out of you, runs the show over there. Vast area of space for tons of different carpet choices and flooring, uh, tile, laminate, whatever you need at uh, Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. Go check them out. Cheaper than anybody else, and you add 10% off or take 10% off when you say my name at Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. And last but not least, my friends at Bosco's Pub. Um, I, boy, uh, trying to hire a new set of um, cooks, it's uh, very difficult for them, so they had to cut back on hours. But they are open now. Bosco's Pub in Hudsonville, Michigan. B-O-S-C-O-S, Bosco'sPub.com. Check them out and uh, enjoy a burger at Bosco's Pub in Hudsonville. Who is your asshole of the day today? The asshole of the day is brought to you by JM Synthetics and TC Paintball. Mm -mm -mm. Aha. The asshole of the day. Comes from the sports world. It is the guy who dented the Stanley Cup. There you go. That's your asshole of the day today on the Eric Zane Show podcast. Other than that, that is my time for today on the free show. Uh, If I think is the Boomer Bunker doing their show right now, or I should say the Bigot Bunker. If you guys want to hear really stupid things said. You must check out this shit show. In fact, I just talked with John the other day and uh, because, you know, all this uh, 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 cuntiness that has been going on uh, lately led to uh, John reaching out to me. And uh, he says, are we okay?" I said, no, man, we're straight. And uh, I said, everything is good. Don't you worry about it. John's show is full of stupid opinions said by stupid people. And anyone who supports their stupid opinions are also stupid. That's what I'm telling you. Adam says, no way. I'm going to listen to Plain Talk John. Can't listen to Boomer. No, no, no. You got to listen. Go there and troll those fucks. Because that's what they are. Troll those silly, silly fucks on that piece of shit show. And then go to play.
Plain Talk John. Have a good one, folks. Till next time. Bye bye. By now, you know that sound. It's the sound of the Home Depot. But what about those sounds? Those are the sounds of a new laundry set that provides a powerful yet gentle clean in less time, making this the sound of savings on top brand appliances. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Get up to 25% off plus 750 instant savings on select appliances. Valid June 22nd through July 13th, US only, gas dryer extra, see store for details. The first five years of a child's life are the most important for healthy development and long-term well-being. The experiences and relationships formed during this period of rapid brain development build a foundation for future learning and success. Yet, this critical development is in jeopardy for many children whose families lack access to quality early learning and care, especially those living in under-resourced communities. The impacts of this opportunity gap are measurable in as early as nine months. Start Early is a proven nonprofit providing doula, home visiting, Head Start, and early Head Start programs, and advocating for policies that put families first. They've been expanding access to quality early learning and care for over 40 years, but there is more work to be done. Learn more about Start Early and the work they do by visiting startearly.org/thrive.